What's up guys, my name is Anton Suarez, and in this video we are going to be talking about Gen 2 Linux. Now Gen 2 Linux is something I've been requested to talk about and to begin the process of an installation guide for a long time now. And this is the first step. This video is what is Gen 2 Linux. And I'm going to be talking about different things that I've experienced in my installation of Gen 2 Linux. Now, I've, I've promised a lot of content with Gen 2 Linux and it is coming now. It's, it's definitely coming. I've gotten an installation installed on my actual machine. Uh, I recently did it. I've gone through all the, the steps and processes to do it. And I'm going to be showing you guys very soon how to do it yourself. The one thing that I'm uh, that's really holding me back to making a full-fledged tutorial series at the moment is I'm, I'm looking in different ways how to build a tutorial series better than Arch Linux, better than the Arch Linux installation guide. That was a good tutorial series, but there was a few problems that I had with it. I talked too fast back then. I still talk too fast, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make myself slow down a little bit. Uh, got some funny comments like, get, lay off the coffee or you're too hyper, which I do understand that. And I, I want to be able to uh, kind of make up for that with Gen 2 Linux tutorial being better than that and being more concise, more to the point, and uh, an overall better installation guide than the Arch Linux installation guide. I want to improve and I want to be able to give this content and give you this installation guide in a better way and in an easier way because Gen 2 compared to Arch Linux and I'm going to get I'm going to get into this more later on in the video is a whole different machine compared to the Arch Linux installation. There's a lot more steps to Ar uh, to Gen 2. A ton more steps compared to Arch Linux. Arch Linux is easy compared to Gen 2 and for some people, especially for me, that's kind of funny to say because for some people Arch Linux is hard and it is hard, but Gen 2 is a lot different and there's different things that happen in Gen 2 that some people say are horrible and that's why it's, you shouldn't use it. Some other people say they're good and I'm going to be discussing that right now. So we're in the handbook main page and I, de I really recommend you take a look at the the, the handbook, the Gen 2 handbook, because the Gen 2 handbook is fantastic. It's a fantastic resource, it's equally as fantastic as the Arch Wiki, Beginner's Guide, AUR, stuff like that. Well, not the AUR, that's a package resource, but the, Ar the Arch Linux Beginner's Guide on their website is equally and fantastic. They're both really good. They're, they're co they cover a lot of things. They have all different architectures, architectures you've never heard of, uh, but for most people, we're on AMD 64 or 64-bit, don't let the name confuse you because it did confuse me. I was like, I'm not on AMD, but that's what 64-bit is called here. It's AMD 64. And this guide is fantastic. It is a fantastic guide. And that's how I'm going to be structuring my installation guide. I'm going to be following this. When I do the installation, I'm going to be following every single step with my own tweaks to it where I've found that the instructions aren't clear enough. That's where I'll pitch in my own kind of experience and that's why it's, it's also taken so long for this to happen is because I had to shut down my system for a couple couple days just to wrap my head around different kind of syntax for installing programs so what makes Gen 2 so different compared to Arch Linux or any other distribution really is you're compiling a lot of things from source um, like Arch Linux it has its own package manager more than even packages it's called Portage and it's the Portage tree, which has e-builds. And everything is pretty much customly compiled to your system. And I hope I'm getting this kind of the gist of it right, because I'm still learning this as we're going along. But um, uh, compiling programs is a different beast than Arch Linux. Where other distributions use packages, this uses compiling from source. So you'll be compiling your program basically tailored to your own computer. It's going to fit your computer better because it's being compiled there. So that's what changes a lot of things. And even in configuring your kernel in the installation process, there's a lot of things where you're building the kernel yourself in uh, make menu config. There's a fantastic menu that comes up and in the installation, I'll show you this where you're able to choose a lot of different things where we're able to pick which uh, hard drive format you use, at ext4, ext3, butterfs, you could really hone everything down in your system to exactly what you want. 
And that's what makes Gen 2 very appealing to the, the, the person who wants to have the ultimate control over their Linux system. This is better control than Arch Linux because you're going to the kernel level, the kernel support level, and you're tailoring your, you're tailoring your kernel to support th different things. And this is even configurable after installation, right? I've had to do this for NVIDIA drivers. Um, I had to re-go into my Linux kernel and add some NVIDIA drivers to it just to get NVIDIA driver support. So it is a very cool system and it's different and it's, it's refreshing to find something different because after using Arch Linux for years now, Arch, used to, Arch Linux used to be a challenge for me and after using it for years, the challenge is gone. It's normal for me to use this Pac-Man and doing things in the motions of Arch Linux and it's easy for me to do that. And Gen 2 is very challenging and it's a refreshing challenge, at least for me it is. Because coming from Arch Linux to Gen 2, this is my second installation of Linux on this machine. I got Windows 10, Linux, Arch Linux, and now Gen 2 permanently installed on this machine. And they're going to be staying. But it's it's different. So I'll, I'll go into the portage a little bit. So in the terminal, everything is based off the portage tree and e-builds. And so like here, we'll run a command. So emerge sync. Emerge sync. Ooh. I remember I, I've added sudo to this. So a lot of things don't come out of the box. Like for me, I had to download sudo. Sudo was a thing that had to come to the system. I had to add sudo manually. And I'm going to show you use variables in a second. That's a very cool part of the Gen 2 Linux. So if I do sudo emerge sync, this will sync the repository with the Gen 2 portage tree. This is the portage tree, and we're going to be grabbing basically all the new e-builds, you know, all the .e-builds, all the newest builds for kind of syncing both my Linux to their side. So this is another cool thing for downloading applications and, and things like that. And after this is done, I will show you the use variables. So use variables are basically you, you're declaring what your machine will run. So if you want to have a uh, GTK or, uh, or OpenGL, you declare that as a use variable in the, in the make.config. And then once you build an application that requires it, it will grab OpenGL, GTK, things like that. You really have all the control over your system for different things and for doing mainly anything. And I'm actually going to open a new terminal because I don't know how much this is going to grab. So we'll go to sudo nano slash etc slash portage slash make dot config so here is my make dot config and i'm going to be zooming this in 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 editing so you're able to see because the font is a little wonky at the moment i still have to fix that but here's the use variable line so use and in this i have told it to build things that i need for my system like network manager and that will grab the network manager dependency or jpeg or png or qt5 i have multi-lib in here i have x for my starting x and an x server d bus icu opengl things like that uh over here we have a, a widevine which is a plugin that for chromium to be able to run netflix and uh even um twitch and other uh, things that are required for netflix to run or certain video players to run in chromium the use variables are very cool, and I'm still learning about the make.config. That's why I'm, I'm still learning about Gen 2 and, and all the different things about it. And it's going to be an ongoing process, especially for the tutorial guide that's coming up soon. And there's a lot more to this as well. There's a lot more different things, CF flags, uh, CXX flags, things like that, that I'm still looking into and learning. And there's even, even some CPU flags that are needed. And this kind of goes into when you're compiling a program. So we'll control X out of that and we'll clear out the terminal and we'll go into installing a program. So for example, I already have Steam running. So I've got a lot of, a lot of things to run on Gen 2 that I'd even say are almost easier in my experience than I had on Arch Linux. And that being said, it's still hard. It was still a pretty difficult uh, thing to even get a user up and running. Um, to even be able to start X in a user. I've had issues where I couldn't even start X. And the one thing I have to say, if you're thinking about installing Gen 2, which if you are a not a veteran Linux user, but you've used Linux enough to where you 
you wrap you've wrapped your mind around uh, nano and um, basic terminal commands, ls cd, being able to uh, chroot things like that, mounting drives. If you have the concept of that, and maybe even if you've installed Arch Linux, I believe you can install Gen two, especially if you uh, follow the guide that's going to be coming up. I mean, very soon coming up, and uh, follow that with me with the Gen 2 handbook. I, I'm going to be using the Gen, uh, Gen 2 handbook even more than I use the Arch Beginner's Guide for my tutorial series because the Gen 2 handbook is fantastic and it will help you get your system up and running. There are some parts of it that are kind of purposely vague to um, for your own information because they're installing it on their own system. There's their own information which I'll f help you get to that point so emerging a program so we'll emerge a program what will emerge uh, let's think we'll emerge Krita so we'll do emerge dash dash search Krita and we'll see if we can find Krita okay so this is an interesting thing this package has been masked so it's masked because number one it might be unstable or it depends on something we can't do, but we're still going to try anyway because this is just an example of things you might run into. So we'll install this regardless. So we'll do e we'll do emerge dash dash ask media. And we don't have to do this, but I like to do this. GFX slash Krita. Would you like the pretend take? Yes. So this is going to be the pat. These are the packages that would be emer merged in order for us to download Krita. So it's going to calculate dependencies and this are the use changes necessary. There's a few use changes we need. Now run the, well I've already run it, the sudo emerge ask update new use at deep and deep at world. This will tell our system, hey we have some new use variables. So now we're going to do the download again. So we're not going to do that. I, I want to do sudo in front of this because I do have sudo downloaded and we'll do sudo emerge ask media gfx krita and as you know i've done a video previously on krita it's a fantastic uh photo uh it's not a photo editor it's a um so two config files have been added so auto mask changes successfully written and i believe this was the problem because we didn't have sudo in front of it so now that we have import two config files etc portage need updating we're going to run etc dash update sudo etc dash update it's a little wonky with permissions there so we dash three new to merge all auto merge all files yes yes there's nothing left to do exiting so now it's merged those files it's gotten those use variables it's gotten the variables needed to fully merge Krita. so we'll continue calculating dependencies and we should be able to install now and yes, we will be able to merge the packages. So we'll press yes, we'll press yes, we'll type yes. And this is going to take a long time. Now there are some a few tricks I've done to speed up emerging, which is basically uh, the process of merging packages with your kernel and your Linux distribution, your custom Taylor distribution. And it does take a little bit to grab. So one end of 61, this might take a while because it's downloading from source. And we'll let this run while I continue to spiel about Gen 2 Linux, basically. Um, so the thing is with Gen 2 is you're compiling a lot of things from source. As you see, it says unpacking source. It is going to be downloading and grabbing all the dependencies Krita needs for my system and built custom for my system because they're from source. Now, with Gen 2, you have a choice. When you're downloading Gen2, you can either get from Gen Kernel. Gen Kernel is a kind of software that allows you to get the generic kernel into basically generic kernel from just Gen2's website. It gives you the generic kernel, which has basically all the. Um, it's basically the normal kernel you get with any other Linux distribution. Or you can do the manual con uh, configuration of the kernel which is what I showed you before in the um, handbook that is the all those lines there were the manual configuration of the kernel now necessarily you don't have to do that you can do generic kernel and get a generic kernel in and even on later on what, what I did was do the gen kernel and then I was able to still generate a new kernel with that basis so that's probably what I'm going to be doing for the tutorial series 
And that's basically the cool side of Gen 2. You're getting everything sourced. It's basically tailored for you. It's like a tailored suit. The tailored suit fits better than the generic suit you're going to get at a, at, a, at a shop. You're basically, this is the men's warehouse of Linux where everything fits. It's basically, you're going to like the way you look, I guarantee it, for Linux. Because like a tailored suit, it fits better than the generic suit you pick up at Walmart. I don't think you're going to buy a suit from Walmart, but then again, you never know. And overall, Gen 2 is a great experience. It's a great testament to Linux as a whole and the customization of Linux and the power of the Linux kernel and that you're able to, to tailor this every way you want, more than Arch Linux in, in a lot of ways. And does that make it better in some ways? Yes. Does it make it harder? Yes. And does it make it a longer process? Definitely. If you don't have the time or don't have the patience for Gen 2 Linux, where you're doing a lot of the process and a lot of the legwork is not done for you, Gen 2 Linux does not hold your hand at all during the way. Arch Linux compared to this is holding your hand. For Gen 2, there's a lot of things that Arch Linux takes care of behind the scenes where Gen 2 doesn't. I also I was looking around the internet for other videos based on Gen 2 Linux, and I stumbled upon Infinitely Galactic's video about Gen 2, and I have to agree with him that for the average consumer or the average user, Gen 2 Linux is probably not for that. Gen 2 Linux, I'm still trying to figure out what Gen 2 Linux purpose is in the grand scheme of things compared to other Linux distributions. Similar to Arch Linux, there's a, it's hard to see the real purpose for something like this. The one thing that I can say is control. There's a lot of control you're going to have over your system. And for the person who wants to have the the undeniable overall control of your system, Gen 2 is for you. You will have the time and you will have the, the real control over your system. Overall, Gen 2 Linux is a great Linux distribution. It's, it's fantastic. It's really unbeatable and I can't compare it to a lot of... There's no other distribution like this where you're doing a lot of things... You really get to see what Linux is all about, and for people who do this and be able to, to make programs for Linux, basically, with Linux being free, with the kernel being free, that you could, anyone can download it, it's really amazing, and it really it does show you what Linux is all about, and it's a great testament to people and learning different things about Linux. You're able to learn a lot more of how the underlying system of Linux works, how the kernel works. And this will carry on to anything you do in the open source field. If you, if if anyone continues to work with open source so open source software, Gen2 Linux will teach you a lot of different things on how software is built, how compiling from source, a lot of the context configurations. As Linux, as a whole, for Gen2 at least, is very text based, text driven, using Nano, using Vim, things like that. So that's going to be it for this video. What do you think about Gen 2 Linux? Leave it in the comment section below. The Gen 2 tutorial series is happening. It's happening as we speak. I'm going to be working on a lot of parts for this so series. It's not going to be a three-part series like Gen Arch Linux was. Arch Linux was easier for me to record and a lot easier process to uh, show. I want to make Gen 2's tutorial concise, very easy for people that are kind of intimidated by Gen 2. And I was too. For a long time, I was very intimidated. And that's why this series took a long time to happen. But it is happening. It's in the works. And you will see it very soon. As always, my name's Anton Suarez. Please rate, like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the Gen 2 installation guide.